KE zero LSR testing, and we we can hear the repeater in Roosevelt talking through this handheld. All right, folks, just uh, spent some time four wheeling out in the Beltrami Island State Forest here in northern Minnesota, and didn't have very good cell reception out there the first day I was wheeling, and I wanted to make sure that I had a way to reach somebody, potentially, if there was an emergency of some sort, since I'm up here by myself on this particular trip. And so what I did is, uh, you know, being a ham guy with all the fun radios and stuff, is I figured out a way to, uh, I shouldn't say I figured out a way, there is a way, using the tools I had available, to ensure that I had some communication. So what I did is I've got the ICOM ID5100 uh, here installed in my pickup. And um, I'm in Roosevelt, Minnesota. And they have a repeater here running on 147 megahertz. Uh, what they, now that duplex is wrong. They actually are minus six. And they are running a tone. But I bumped the controls so that doesn't show up that way there. Um, and so I set this up to work in a repeater mode so that I could have my pickup truck, which could at 50 watts, reach their repeater and have my portable, I've got an ID51 and that was going to be able to reach my pickup truck um, on 440 megahertz. So what I did is we tuned in, see if that's a little bit better. It is a little bit better. So what I did here is I set up, it doesn't matter which is which on the radio. So we set up 147 megahertz. Um, we're gonna go in and we're gonna make sure our duplex and our tone. I know that they're running at 123 hertz for their tone and their offset's gonna be negative. So we're gonna go ahead and change duplex to negative. And we're going to set tone to tone. And now, and duplex went back. Oh, I'm on the wrong. <laughs> All right. Duplex, negative, tone, tone. All right. Um, this VFO is now configured to talk to the repeater in Roosevelt, Minnesota. This one here, then, we're going to get rid of duplex. And we're going to get rid of tone. And we're going to actually go to a DTCS code. And for that, we're gonna go in here, tone, and our DTCS we have set is 452. And Why did I set a DTCS code on this? I didn't want, if I ran into noise um, or some other um, operator running on 440 megahertz uh, to accidentally key up a repeater that they weren't intending to key up. So I picked a fairly high DTCS code that wasn't likely to be used by somebody else. Not as a security thing, but just me, me trying to be a good citizen and not uh, key up a repeater on a frequency that the repeater's not set up to run on, um, just for my own uh, personal temporary use. And so once we've got both of these configured, I know this works, I've tested I'm not going to chunk the repeater just for the YouTube. Um, and then I know that this works here. If I turn on my ID5100, and there we are. If we go ahead and kerchunk this guy, all right. So then the next step um, is this is the ID5100A that has the crossband repeater function enabled. The ID5100E, the European model, has a diode in place that prevents crossband repeater. Um, there are a number of other YouTube channels out there that um, show you how to do that, but um, if you've done the Mars Cop Cap mod on this, uh, it's just another one of those diodes that you Europeans need to remove um, to enable the crossband repeater. So what we do here now is we go into menu, we go all the way down to others. Sorry, that's kind of hard to read there. We go to others. 
go to repeater mode, we go to repeater mode. Enter repeater mode, yes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kerchunk this now. And uh, hopefully it's not too loud here. For now, I'm gonna turn the volume basically all the way down for now. And then I'm going to operate on this guy here. KE0 LSR testing. And we, we can hear the repeater in Roosevelt talking through this handheld. KE0 LSR clear. And there we go. So, out in the woods, I can have my handheld use my pickup truck's more powerful 50 watt transceiver to reach the repeater 25 miles away that my handheld could not reach from where I was in the forest. So, hope that helps. A little uh, neat setup and feature that you can do. Um, one, one more comment real quick here about why I chose this radio. I've got a bunch of bow things and those would have worked just as well. Um, but I like having this one with me because it has the built-in GPS. If my phone was dead, um, ran out of battery or something, I'd have the ability to pull my coordinates um, off of this radio. So if I go and uh, I go to quick and I go down to GPS position, I can actually see exactly where I am. And what's also kind of neat that I didn't know before is that this will actually give you your grid square. So, so I hope this helps. I uh, hope you found it interesting and um, have a safe ride. This is really pretty. A little rainy, but overall not too shabby. Wish I had my, uh, my boots and not my pennies. Left them back at the camper. Uh, don't have my helmet. Left that at the camper. Just too focused. I'm cleaning up camp today so that I'm ready to leave in the morning.